Mrs. Indira Gandhi, Prime Minister of India, arrived today to address the first United Nations Conference on the Human Environment. It is clear that the environmental crisis which is confronting the world will profoundly alter the future destiny of our planet. The very fact that the conference began with 113 participating countries with very high level uh, delegations from those countries, this in itself represented a very significant step forward. We have to be extremely critical of the point of view that simply turning the old economic crank faster is going to somehow close the gap between the rich and the poor. We found in the environmental field that mutual self-interest is a very powerful incentive to enforcement. seminal points in his history where his own activities are the principal determinants of his own future. Famine, disease, poverty are inevitable only if we believe they are. Promises have been made and yet still our future is in danger. It is an ethical disaster if at the end of the day we learn that our well-being, especially in the developed countries, was on the expense of coming generation. Even when the UN General Assembly decided to establish UNEP in 1972, there was a belief that environmental concerns are secondary to economic development. Uh, today, few dispute that a healthy environment is necessary for poverty eradication, economic and social progress, and the successful post-2015 development agenda. Addressing the environmental sustainability challenge is not somehow an afterthought. It is not something that you can afford to defer in the name of development. Very often, development decisions have actually impoverished people because they have destroyed natural assets, ecosystems, access to natural resources. We now know that it is the environmental foundations that will enable us to talk about sustainable development and even economic development in the future. The UN Environment Assembly is a coming of age moment for UNEP. For the first time, all 193 member states plus major stakeholders will be represented. This gives a major boost to UNEP's mandate and the recognition that the environment is an equal and indispensable dimension of sustainable development. That means large, small nations are actually represented at the table and therefore have an ability to also shape the future of environmental governance and through that also the broader sustainable development agenda. The UN has to be there, but it has to be a strengthened and reinforced UN. And that UN needs to have the support of not just governments, but people have to realize that their future depends on an effective, functioning UN. What the next 40 years will bring is depending on the dedication of the people. The future, I believe, for UNEA is that the environmental changes that we are now confronted with are translated from threats that often divide nations to opportunities that allow collective and unified actions to succeed. We are at a critical juncture. The birth of the UN Environmental Assembly is both necessary and timely. 
will need wise policies and decisive action based on sound science. The world counts on the UN Environment Assembly to help us provide a life of dignity for all.